Hello, class. Um, I am in the middle of marking your fashion innovator tasks, and I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break um, because I'm noticing the same mistakes um, in multiple um, people's work. So I just want, think that it's more important that I take a break and show you again how to do this um, so we can have it in our brains before the unit summative. So what I've done is I've just basically created a really simple um, PowerPoint to kind of mimic the fashion trendsetter task that you did before. You can see it's not nearly as in depth as what you were doing, uh, but it's got all of the main things that I want to talk about today. So you can see my title page, I have an image and you can see I have an in-text citation. So this shows actually where I got that image. So if I were to go to this website, the image would be somewhere in here and here it is. So when I find this image on Google Images, let me just So um, when I look at the images, let's say I like this image. What I would do would be that I would go to it. Thank you. you Sorry about that. Um, so I would go to the image that I liked and I would go to the website, which is this one. And then I would work on citing that. So. The image is here. I've got my citation creator here. And what I want to do is I want to source a digital image. So if you do all your writing first and then do all your images second, then it'll be easier for you to do your citation um, or do your images and then do your writing. It's just so you can stay in this spot. Um, if it has a title, you can put it in. If it has a description, you can put it in. But usually the images don't. What you're going to start with is the URL, and then on the website, you're going to look for any form of date, and you can see April 2017, and we also have April there, so I'm going to put those dates in. April 2017. The total is going to be, the title is going to be Vogue Italia, because I can see my internet right here and I accessed it today so when I click create citation it gives me the citation right here and we can see that it's an image because it's got this square bracket di digital image so some of you are putting your images in one like section of the work cited and then your your written research in another uh, don't worry about that just put it all together and I'll be able to tell what's an image based off of this if you need the in-text citation, it's going to give you that here. So I have my title and my year like that. And then it's showing me how to do it. Um, once you get good at parenthetical citations, you should just be able to look at your, in your work cited and be able to um, get that figured out. So I have my image here. I actually changed that title, so I'm going to change that title here. Make it a little bit bigger so it's all in one line. Perfect. So for research, it's the same kind of deal. I've got some research here. All of this research is in my own words. You can see because there's no quotation marks. This here, you can see there's quotation marks, so that means that it is not in my own words. All of this. So, for example, here's one of the sites that I went to to find out information about this model. It's got an author, it's got a date, it's even got photography, so if I wanted to use one of the images from this article, I've even got the photographer, which is kind of cool. We don't often get the information about the photographer. I've got my URL here, and that should give me enough to get a good citation. So let's do that together. So I'm going to website. I'm going to start with the URL because sometimes it finds information for us. 
but it's not entirely accurate all of the time. So we still have to check it. So there's my site. It's found some information. So I'm going to go to the final step. And I'm going to look it all over. So the article title is The Ugly Duckling. These authors are wrong. You can see the author here. It might, it might have just scrolled through the page and looked for a name. So I'm going to change that. S. Holland Murphy. I'm going to take these guys out. It's just an algorithm looking for this information, so it can make mistakes, but it at least sometimes can help you. Um, electronically published, it said September 2017. I don't have a day, so I just don't put it. And we're good. So we're going to create the citation. It's here. I can copy paste it. If I wanted to do parenthetical, so I put it in here. Here it is, Murphy. If I wanted to do parenthetical, I just do the last name and the date. So it's going to be bracket Murphy, comma 2017, just like this. So you can see, I didn't know any of this information about this model. So you can see that each point has a parenthetical citation at the end of it, because I researched it. This is my own words but I got it from this and I kept that information in there. You can see that this picture also has an in-text citation. So everything that is in my work is in my work cited. So I cite Murphy, I cite Moscovich, and I just used Fitch a little, like I just looked at it. Um, there wasn't really anything that I specifically used, but I included it in there just in case. Um, and then we have my two digital images here and I have all of my sources in alphabetical order, whether they're digital images or not. So I have F, M, O, M, U, T, and V. So this is what I'm looking for. And this is what your other teachers will be looking for. Um, if they're not um, this strict or stringent on APA citation, they definitely will be in college or university. So you need to figure this out and you need to figure it out fast. Uh, I'm willing to like meet up with you on Skype to help you with this APA citation. Once you figure it out, you should be good. Like it's something you don't forget. Um, but yeah, uh, I was I've been kind of disappointed with the citation that I've seen so far on the fashion innovator tasks. So if you are not happy with your marks thus far, feel free to uh, adapt your work and resubmit it, and I'll change that mark.